The focus of this experiment is to use atomic force microscopy, AFM, to probe the physical properties of self-assembled monolayers of alkyl thiols on gold substrates. After weighing out the appropriate amounts of PDMS and curing agent as specified in the lab manual, you want to make sure that this is weighed out in a disposable jar and stir carefully. Once the mixture is stirred, you'll want to make sure that it's degassed so that there's no bubbles in it. In order to do this, we use a vacuum desiccator, which will be in the hood. So you want to put the jar with the PDMS polymer and curing agent into the desiccator. Make sure the top is on. and you want to leave this here for 20 minutes. Use scissors to cut out three pieces of CD, making sure that they are label side up, or the place where the label used to be on the CD up, because this is the side you're going to use for the pattern. The pieces should be approximately one centimeter squared in area. You want to arrange them in the petri dish such that they are not directly next to each other, but that you'll have enough room to cut around them when you are ready to do so after it anneals in the oven. Once the polymer has degassed, pour it carefully over the CD inside the petri dish. You'll want a layer approximately two to three millimeters above the height of the CD. Error on the side of three millimeters though. Once you have poured over the CD, it'll look something like this. You'll have a relatively uniform layer of the polymer on top, and you're now ready to place the Petri dish in the oven so that the polymer can be cured. Now that you've obtained the um, polymer back from the oven and it's been cured, you'll want to cut out the individual stamps that you'll be using Obtain a razor blade and make long but deep cuts in the polymer. Notice that I'm not cutting on the edge of where the CD is, but within and the center. Once you have cut the stamp out, Carefully remove it with tweezers. And you want to obtain a petri dish and be sure you know which way the stamp is facing. As you lift up the stamp, it's a good idea to take 
a permanent marker and put a dot on the side that is not face down because you'll want to place this face up or the side where the pattern of the CD has actually been made when you put it in the petri dish. Even though the marker will wash off later with the ethanol, it's good to help you keep track of it when it's on here as you prepare to actually ink the stamp with the alkane thiol. Now that you have cut out the stamps, you want to make sure that they are placed with the patterned side face up in the petri dish and make sure that the petri dishes are labeled with the respective thiol that is going to be adhered to the stamp. This one in particular is dodecane thiol. Under the hood, open up the solution of the thiol using a plastic disposable pipette place a couple of drops of the thiol on the surface of the stamp. Be sure to discard your pipette immediately after. Let the thiol solution stay on the surface of the stamp for about five minutes or so. If you get the thiol solution on your gloves, be sure to immediately dispose of your gloves and put on new ones, as the smell is rather unpleasant. Now that the thiol has been on the stamp for approximately five minutes, carefully use tweezers to pick up the side of the stamp. Carefully use tweezers to pick up the side of the stamp. Actually use these tweezers. Pour ethanol in a beaker and use a plastic pipette to liberally rinse the top of the stamp with ethanol. Make sure you're keeping track of which side is up because you'll be wanting to rinse the surface. You want to hold the stamp and make sure that all the ethanol has evaporated off of it because you will not want to see anything on the surface before you actually go and stamp the gold surface. Now that you're ready to stamp, you'll want to make sure that the part with the patterned alkane thiol is facing down at this point. Carefully place it over the gold foil. Make sure you rest your hand on the edge of the hood or your arm on the edge of the hood for increased stability and drop it down onto the surface. When it's on the surface, with the tweezers, carefully apply light pressure and constant pressure for several seconds. And then very carefully peel the stamp off and place it back into the dish. When preparing to use the AFM, be sure that you do not lean, sit, or place any objects on this table. The draft box should remain on the AFM at all times unless the tip is being changed. Carefully open the door of the draft box and remove the magnetic sample stage. There's a piece of double-sided tape on it and carefully stick your slide with the gold substrate and self-assembled monolayer on it to the stage, making sure it's firmly on. Place the stage back in the vicinity 
of the microscope, make sure it's on the magnetic strip, close the draft box, and you're now ready to turn on the instrument and operate the computer such that you can place the sample under the tip. Be sure to turn on the power source to the AFM instrument before operating the software on the computer. Prior to operating the software, be sure that the door to the draft box is closed over the AFM instrument. And also be sure that the AFM is level by looking carefully over the head at the bubble within the black circle. Open the NanoSurf EasyScan 2 software after the power supply to the AFM has been turned on. Under the acquisition tab that comes up, change static force to dynamic force and change the tip type, which is under that, to ACL-A. You'll notice to the right that there's a video which shows the AFM tip up close. You want to be sure that the tip is retracted by clicking and holding retract significantly before your lab partner places the slide with the stage under the tip for imaging. Once the slide with the stage has been placed carefully and you are sure that the gold substrate is directly under the tip, click and hold advance and hold this until you see a shadow emerge. Be careful when you advance that the shadows of the cantilever do not touch, otherwise the AFM tip will break. This shadow is of the AFM tip and indicates that it's getting close to the surface. Once the shadows are roughly touching, click approach instead of advance. You'll only need to click this once. You'll notice that an automated procedure has started, which brings the tip as close as possible to the surface. Once the approach is complete, click OK, and you are now ready to begin imaging. Prior to clicking Start to take the image, be sure that the image size is set to 50 micrometers that the time per line is set to one second, and that the number of points per line is set to 128. Once these parameters are set on the left-hand side of the software, click Start to begin imaging. Once you're sure that the image looks satisfactory, be sure to click Finish, not Stop, in order to make sure that it does a complete scan and does not simply continue scanning extra images after this particular scan. Unlike the current image here, what you'll be looking for are repeating white patterns on the image itself. If you do not see these, you'll need to reposition the slide under the AFM head. In order to do this, you'll need to click Withdraw, and then you'll need to click and hold Retract in order to make sure that the tip is significantly away from the slide itself before your, you or your lab partner pull out the actual stage and reposition the slide under the head. Once you have an acceptable image, you'll want to zoom in on the area of interest. In order to do this, you want to click on the zoom feature on the auto chart and carefully draw a box in which the feature you're interested in is directly centered in that box. Once you release, 
go over to parameters, change the image size to 10 micrometers, and the number of points per line to 256 to double the resolution. And then click the zoom button. And once you've clicked the zoom button, click start. And the imaging process will start again. Once the zoomed in image has been taken, go to the analysis tab and click on create cross section. Adjust it such that it only encompasses one ridge. You'll notice on the tool status where it says delta Z, it is averaging the height of the features within this given area that you've clicked on. When you click cut out line, it will create an image and you'll be able to see the topography as a cross section. You'll want to do this for several areas and several ridges and write down the numbers of delta Z in order to get an average for these values. Once you've obtained the cross sectional image, you'll want to go to file, save as, and title the NID file based on the particular alkane thiol you've imaged, and click Save. Additionally, you can save the image as a PDF by going to File, Print, going to Printer, and clicking Adobe PDF, clicking Print, And it will enable you to save the same file, but this time as a PDF image, which will then show up on the screen along with the data itself. Additionally, you can export the raw data as a CSV file by going to File, Export, Export Current Chart, and you'll see the comma separated value, Z values, come up. Save this in the appropriate public documents area. And then later export it to your individual H drive. Also, you'll want to make sure that you save an image of the actual AFM image itself. And in order to do so, click Capture. And an image will pop up as an NID file. You'll want to save this NID file by going to File, Save As. And again, appropriately titling the image according to which alkane thiol you've imaged. Further, you can save this as a PDF as before by simply going to File, Print, clicking Adobe PDF as the printer, clicking Print, and you'll have all the information within a PDF. You want to be sure to save all of your data in users, public, public documents, nanosurf data. And then only after the instrument has been shut down and, and the software has been exited out of, you can go back in and copy and paste those files into your individual H drive and make sure each team member logs in and does this. Before removing the slide from under the AFM tip, you'll want to click Withdraw, and then click and hold Retract.
until past when the shadows fully diverge. Once the retraction is complete, carefully open the draft box and make sure visually and up close that the slide is sufficiently away from the tip prior to withdrawing it. Once you're sure it's away from the tip, carefully withdraw the stage and replace it with the next alkane thiol. Repeat this process for each of the alkane thiols. You want to be sure to start with the longest of the alkane thiols as it's easier to image and it will enable you to get enough practice for the remainder. When you are done with all your measurements and you've completely retracted the uh, AFM head from the glass slides, um, you'll want to exit out of the software first and then turn off the power unit for the instrument. Make sure each member of the group at the very end logs on and saves the files to their individual H drives.